Hello, welcome to this video on implicit differentiation. My name is Nakai Rimmer. I'm happy to help you through this, this calculus journey. Today we're going to look at what does it mean to be able to take the derivative of a function that is defined implicitly. These functions that we have here, they're all y equals a formula of x. This is representative of an explicitly defined function. These aren't the ones we're dealing with in this lesson. In this lesson, we're going to be dealing with functions that have x and y intertangled together so that you can't untangle them. x and y are in an entanglement, and you can't get the y separated. All right, here's an example. x squared y cubed minus 2xy is equal to 6x plus y plus 19. I can't solve this for y in terms of x only. I can't write this explicitly, but that's okay. I'm still going to be interested in finding the slope of the tangent line at a particular value of x and y. In fact, uh, sometimes what happens with these kinds of functions is they aren't even technically functions. They'll be violators of the vertical line test. This, here's a graph of this function. Okay. And I'm interested in finding the slope of the tangent line at a particular value of x and y that's on the curve. Okay, This function is defined implicitly in terms of x. And we're interested in um, trying to figure out, I know I can't solve for y, but I want to be able to still find y prime. Okay, And so let's do it. On the next slide, we'll think about the, the sort of the idea of how to do it, and then we will um, walk through it step by step. Okay, so the point that I'm interested in, when x is negative 2, y ends up as 1. Back on this graph here, x is negative 2, the y is 1, there's a positive sloping tangent line there. I am going to find the slope of that tangent line. Okay. All right, great. Here's how you should think about it. You don't have to do every question this way, but here's how, you, when you first encounter it, here's what you should think about. I know I can't write y as a function of x, but I can think about it as being that way. I can replace all my y's with f of x. And so that's what I've done here. Ripped out the y's and put the symbol f of x to reinforce what's to happen when you go to try to find the derivative of y. I want you to think of the f of x as a separate function from the x's that you see there. And when you encounter these terms that have both the x and the y, the x and the f of x in it, you're going to have to execute the product rule. All right, great. So our job is going to be to take the derivative of the equation. If the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, then the derivative of the left-hand side should be equal to the derivative of the right-hand side. So what I'm going to do is take each individual term and put the symbol ddx in front of it taking the derivative of the entire equation. These two terms that are on the left-hand side have both x and f of x in them. Each of these guys will have to be then done as a product rule. We'll treat the x squared as the first function, the f of x quantity cubed as the second function. We'll execute the product rule. The derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So here's where the new wrinkle comes in. You have to take the derivative of f of x who's cubed. Power rule says, hey, you bring down the three, you take it to the two. Chain rule says, oh, wait, wait, don't stop there. That was more than just an x who was cubed. So you must then multiply by the derivative of the inside. So it's like when you encounter a term that has a y in it, just remember to multiply by the derivative of y. You can use whatever symbol you want. We could have put ddx or dfdx there, um, or dy dx even. Okay, I'm using f prime. Now we move to the second term, which is also a product rule. Take the negative as being part of the 2x, the first function, and then the f of x is the second function. Derivative of the first, negative 2, times the second, plus the first, negative 2x, whose times the derivative of the second, and f's derivative is just symbolically f prime. You have taken the derivative of the left-hand side, 
each term had a product rule, so they got two separate terms. But now when it comes to the right-hand side, derivative of 6x, just a 6. Derivative of f of x, f prime of x. Derivative of 19, 0. I purposely color coded f prime of x so that we can isolate, find out where these guys are, pull them on the same side, isolate them, and solve. And so we're going to put all these terms on the left hand side. The terms they don't have, and we're going to move them to the right hand side. So to this first term, it is no f prime on that. It's going to go over to the other side by subtracting it, moving it over. Uh, the other terms are fine with the f prime in them. The, uh, the f prime is on the right-hand side, needs to be subtracted over. And there's one more term there, uh, 2 f of x needs to be shipped over to the right-hand side. Yeah. All right. So the left-hand side is going to have the, uh, the second term, okay, the fourth term. And now subtracted over from the right-hand side is this minus f of x. And then the right-hand side, the 6 stays there. And then there's two terms from the left-hand side that are being shipped over. One is being added and the other is being subtracted. Okay, this is it. This is how it works. Implicit differentiation. You don't have to do it this way, though, by replacing the, the f y with an f of x. You can leave it as a y. I'm just trying to show you since this might be your first time seeing it. All right, I agree. So what's going to happen next? It's just algebra. Okay, as soon as you took that derivative of the entire left and right-hand side, the calculus is over. Okay, now we're doing algebra. We're trying to solve for f prime. So we need to factor out the f prime on the left hand side. And we're left with three terms. And then in order to get the f prime by itself, we're going to divide by that. That's it. You did it. You took the derivative. So what's special about these derivatives is that they don't only involve x, like explicit functions do. These guys' derivatives also involve y. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and put the y's back in? So this is a formula. You give me an x and y, and I will spit out the slope of your tangent line. That's what, we, that's what we're looking for. This is, this is what we wanted here. Actually, at a very particular point, we wanted it, but this is a formula that we can have uh, for any x and y. And so um, what we could have done, though, is uh, we could have plugged our point in rather early. You know, as soon as we took the derivative of both sides, we could have plugged the actual x and y in and been working just with numbers instead of symbols. But this is how it works um, if you wait till the very end to plug in. We have a nice formula, which is good about that, is that you can now plug in any point that's on the curve and be able to immediately spit out the derivative of the, uh, the, this, the value of the derivative at that point. Okay, almost done. Let's take our x equals negative 2 and our y equals um, 1. Negative 2 for x. Y for 1, we'll plug it in and we'll get a number, and that number represents the slope of the tangent line. Okay? Y prime is in terms of both X and Y. All right, so X is negative 2, and Y is 1. Replace all those X's with negative 2's. Replace all those Y's with 1's. It's a crazy um, order of operations question, but you could do it. Uh, the cubing and the exponent part, that's just straightforward there. So we have 6 plus a 4 plus a 2, and then we'll have a 12 plus a 4 minus a 1. Very careful there with the sign. So numerator is 12, denominator is 15. Mm, can't leave it like that, of course. Reduce it. Your derivative at that point should be 4 fifths. That graph that we had, here's this tangent line at the point negative 2, 1. Remember now, tangent lines, they cross locally at that one point. Later on, they could cross someplace else, but there we did it. And that's the measurement of how the function is changing. As, as you change x by 5, y should go up by 4. Okay, great. Let's end this video here. Um, we'll come back with two other examples and then um, move on to the next topic. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm happy to help you through this math journey, this calculus journey. Um, please feel free to comment down below, uh, like, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.